It's 4.39 a.m. Like yes, can I have a coffee with um, two sweet dicks? Pardon? You're listening to Up With A Partridge. It's that part Up of us on air. Partridge. Two sweet dicks, please. You're listening to, as I say, Up With A Partridge. That's been said five times now. <laughs> uh, uh, Alan's fact of the day. Tusks are congealed hair. Another one of those. Same time tomorrow. Just coming up to seven o'clock. <laughs> That was Cindy Lauper, who, despite the spiky-haired punk rock image, has invested her money very wisely in property. <laughs> it's 6.30 a.m., and I see that uh, Dr David Clifton, professor of pop at Roxford University, is uh, with us, preparing for his 7 a.m. show. Not, he's not really a professor. He uh, didn't go to college. Uh, left school when he was 15, I think, um, because his mother was ill. <laughs> I've got my foot back in the door at the BBC. Oh, are we going to see you back on the television? Well, in a word, probably yes. <laughs> uh, right, OK. A costume chat show hosted by me as Samuel Pepys. <laughs> you, know, you could have an actor like John Thor playing, uh, playing a king, you know, a Nordic king. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, they, they could get information fed to them by experts. You know, you could have Stephen Hawking's behind a screen, you know, whispering clues through his computer. <laughs> Oh, that, that is Premier League. Oh, ten on ten, then. <laughs> is, uh, is this ceiling high or low? <coughs> I think it's in the middle. It is, isn't it? <laughs> you make a note of that. <laughs> Loft access, that's good. Actually, someone could use it to break in. Block it off. <laughs> oh, lovely. I love this. Oh, it's very plush, deep carpet. Mm. Marvellous. Yeah. I mean, you should take your shoes off, really, in here. <laughs> Yes. I know Paul Daniels insists on it. People have a go at him for it, but uh, they don't have to clean it, do they? Why do you neither does he? Debbie does it. <laughs> is, is there a bus service? Uh, there's no public transport, actually. You do need a car to get here. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a message from a Nigel Gallagher asking you to call oh, him right, urgently. Right, yeah. Hello. Nigel, uh, it's Alan. H how's the Oasis? Alan. Excuse me, Nigel. It's Noel. Noel Gallagher from Oasis. Uh, Nigel, I I'm being told that your name's Noel. <laughs> Is that correct? Well, do you want to check? <laughs> it it's in the glove compartment. It is. Well, well, no, we we've fallen at the first hurdle, haven't we? <laughs> well, no, that's not what I pay you for. <laughs> well, Noel, will you come on my show and sing songs with the Oasis? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> There's uh, was my PA, Lynn. Listen, Alan. Such a simple thing. <laughs> Alan, are you going to come to our romantic Valentine's Day buffet this evening? Is that a proposition? No, I'm promoting the Valentine buffet. <laughs> oh, sounds superb, but uh, I need an escort. Shall I ring an agency? <laughs> If I was to sack everyone at Pear Tree Productions, and you, would I be able to trade up to a Rover 600? <laughs> no, you wouldn't make the savings. You only pay me £7,000 a year. Right. Well, you're cheap, I'll give you that. <laughs> uh, OK, if, if I sacked you, stay with this, Lynn, <laughs> would I be able to specify air conditioning as an option on the Rover 200? Yes, you could. Right. No. You see, it really is a godsend in those summer months. Well, in hot days, I could hold a hand fan to your face. Well, congratulations, Len. You've just successfully renegotiated your contract. <laughs> so, uh, what, 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 what's your, uh... Situation. Do you mean do I have a partner? Yes, do, do you have a partner in crime? <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying what you do is criminal. Yeah. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like criminality. I mean, I, I, I'll be honest, I, I mean, I, I will not break the law. You know, I'll, I'll say that now. <laughs> I'm in school. Oh, yeah. Celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> I ought to make me white chocolate. And they could call them black and white minstrels. <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a very good one. 
black and white men's clothes. Mm. Give him a marvellous sense of humour. Of course. <laughs> Is uh, all done? Maybe like to order dessert? I I'll deal with this. Um, <laughs> are, are we all done? We'll be like to order a dessert. They've, they've also said to us, would uh, remind you that we'll have tonight, because it's Valentine's, a uh, selection of cocktails for lovers. Cocktails for lovers? That's reasonably clear. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? It's very different from English. Yeah. <laughs> Why, man, you know, nowadays when I get back here in Newcastle, you know, most folks are saying to us, right, your accent's gone, gone all soft. Usually when I go back home to Newcastle, people say my accent's gone soft. I, I'd, I'd question that, but uh, <laughs> carry on. Singapore sling. Slow, comfortable screw. <laughs> Slow, comfortable screw against a wall. Oh, it's so funny, isn't it? <laughs> I'll have a Singapore sling. And uh, for you, Miss Partage? I'll have a pint of bitter, please. <laughs> Do you remember uh, nutty bars, nuts on the outside? Good idea, but in the end, quite painful to eat. <laughs> it could bring on a gum boil. Oh, I've actually got one now. Right, right there. <laughs> right there. I tell you what I'll do every morning. Bit of shadow boxing, that's good, you know. Oh, bit of... right. That's good. Get you going. I'm going to get you. <laughs> that's it. Hi, hi, hi. Come on. No, here, look, I'll, I'll show you a wee trick, right? It's called a faint, right? Yeah. I'll faint with my left. Watch, ready? <laughs> Oh, right, yeah. frame with the left, get him with the right, right? right? Yeah, like, oh, uh, you twat! All right, hang on, I'm a guest, I'm a guest! <laughs> I, suppose, I suppose you could apply the ladyboy principle to the hotel. So from the outside, it, it looks like a two-star hotel, but uh, you walk inside, voila, it's a three-star hotel. Well, I do like to think that the service is five-star, Alan. Hmm. <laughs> okay. I think Egon Rone would have a few words to say about that. He'd probably say... No, it's not. It's a three-star. <laughs> How are you today, Alan? Well, well. Hmm. My ointment is fine, but uh, as with all ointments, I'm afraid there's a fly in it. The, the, the ointment, by the way, is a corporate video, and the fly is my wife, Carol, who, ironically, I want to be in the ointment stroke corporate video. <laughs> cow. I'm, I'm afraid I'm not... Basically, I'm saying that there's a cow in my ointment. <laughs> Oh, superb backside at quarter to two. <laughs> Alan, you wipe in. Where? Why? There. Let me see. Uh, who's my wife? I think I'm your wife. There you are. Yes, hello, darling. Yeah, d uh, my wife didn't recognise you with your uh, clothes on. <laughs> well, we're married. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? Nothing wrong at all. Nothing wrong at all, lover. Talk about morning glories, like a broom handle first thing. <laughs> <laughs> it might look a bit pokey from the outside, but a Hamilton's boat is deceptively large. My wife and I found it actually offers the kind of luxury and comfort you'd normally associate with a good quality static caravan. <laughs> Plus, if you don't like the neighbours, you can either up anchor, head upstream, or if you can garner enough support, confront them and persuade them to leave the area. <laughs> this is my wife and I going off to the local marketplace, where we could buy anything from plimsolls to posters of famous Hollywood stars. Take four. One of the benefits of global warming and international terrorism is that more and more people are holidaying now. Can we secure this, please? Completely tax free. <laughs> it's perfectly legal. It's moored in Miami. Action! I'm Popeye Partridge. <laughs> well, I risk life and limb by letting my wife, Olive Oil, take the helm there. I'm going to build up my muscles with a can of spinach. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In the cartoons, it goes right down. <laughs> I suppose from outer space, East Anglia looks a little bit misshapen, grotesque, like the back of the elephant man's head. But from down here, believe you me, it's far more attractive. All right, love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, come come smell the dairy pot. Oh, Jesus, what's that on? All right, it's just my life jacket being deployed. <laughs> so they're just farmers. There'll be no problem with them anymore. 
Then pull your skirt now, and I can see my... <laughs> oh, God. Yes? Is everything all right, Mr Partridge? You heard a bit of commotion. No, no, it's fine. Oh, right, um... <laughs> Do you know you've got chocolate in your face? <laughs> I heard a bit of a commotion. Is <laughs> I was not hurry. <laughs> yes. Uh, sorry to bother you, Mr. Party, but I heard a bit of commotion. Everything all right? Oh, this is fine. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> do you know you got chucked in your face? <laughs> That was Phil Collins with Against All Odds from 1984, a year predicted by George Orwell and his book of the same name. Uh, it's interesting, isn't it, how we all used to be so concerned about the idea of Big Brother and surveillance cameras, and yet I think since that time we've discovered that perhaps they are the best weapon in the battle against street thugs. So uh, thank you, George Orwell, for prompting the idea of surveillance cameras. Uh, one thing George didn't predict was that uh, nine years earlier, Mike Oldfield would come crashing into the charts with Portsmouth. Lynn, I am a national broadcaster trapped in the body of a regional disc jockey. <laughs> There's no operation can save me. Not on the NHS, anyway. <laughs> Actually, I've just forgotten to do Alan's fact of the day, which is Dick Turpin was under five foot. Another one of those, same time tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, um, does Sophie tell you Mr. Penis head called? <laughs> what did you just say? Mr. Penis head called. That's not what you just said. What did I say? You just said Mr. Penis head. <laughs> <laughs> that swagger will go when he hits 36. <laughs> this little swine's trying to get me on the inside. No way, Jose! No way! No way! No way. Two can play at that game, Mr. Loud Trousers. Look at him, like a like a sodding lunatic. He's only going to five. Sorry, Lynn, that's, that's ignore all that. It's all extraneous information. You look actually a little bit catatonic there, Alan. Is that good? Uh, no, not if you're a radio DJ. How's your life? Is it? Uh... It's very good, thank you very much. On the up, I think you can say. Yeah. Had one or two little offers. Don't want to right. speak too much about those. <laughs> Off the source, then. <laughs> well, obviously, uh, you know, as you know, that's all, that's all behind me now, and uh, you know, it's just good to get on, get on with life. And anyway, uh, I wouldn't throw stones in glass houses, Alan. Don't live in a glass house, mate. Made of bricks. <laughs> <laughs> Got an answer for everything, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Do you know that uh, you're the only guest in a hotel? Yes. Yeah, well, we can put you up in a honeymoon suite, if you like. It's got a good big bed in there, hasn't it? Mm. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> My room's got a big bed, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're disgusting. <laughs> Hello, is that Roadhog? This is Alan Partridge. I'm calling to arrange delivery for a Castrol GTX bomber jacket in tan. <laughs> so it's 400 London Road, Linton. It's the Linton Travel Tavern. Right at the Esso Garage on the A12. Yeah, don't go left. You'll end up in Mike Oldfield's estate. If he thinks you're a poacher, he'll shoot you. <laughs> right, uh, uh, Lynn, I want to impose a dress code for this afternoon. So, uh, no trainers, no ripped jeans, unless it's ladies wearing ripped jeans in a sexy way. Um, <laughs> not, not women that have clearly let themselves go. Um, <laughs> And uh, no shorts. Anyone wearing shorts <sighs> is probably slightly mentally disturbed. <laughs> Actually, Alan, it must be terrible for you. You have to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning to come in and do the graveyard shift, uh, which is, uh, quite frankly, a thankless task. So it's actually... I think there's a kind of serenity. I mean, the good thing is about doing the earlier show... Yes. Actually, what is, is the, the good thing about doing the <laughs> early show? I would really like to know. <laughs> well, no, seriously. It, it is good insofar as you can tackle issues with... Uh, with a bit more substance rather than just sort of having to skim over the surface superficially as, as, as you do in more kind of prime and, time uh, slots. And when are you going to do that? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I already have. 
<laughs> yeah, I suppose you have. Yeah, it's yeah. actually, no, it's great. Out it's great. of order there, Dave, yeah. <laughs> actually. Uh, no. All right, no. Bang, bang no. out of order. <laughs> Idea for a mountaineering drama entitled Bonnington, with Brian Blessed in the title role. Uh, to be filmed on location on Everest, with close-ups on Scarfell Pike. No one know the difference, we'll just uh, paint the rocks white. I also know for a fact that uh, Brian Blessed can act at high altitude without oxygen. <laughs> Idea for a programme entitled Roman Hobbies. Self-explanatory. <laughs> the History of Chocolate. A light-hearted look at confectionery through the ages. The full chocolate gamut. Um, the ripple versus flake debate. <laughs> chocolate banjos, what went wrong. <laughs> I think that is possibly the worst idea I have ever had. Yeah, yeah, it, it even beats glass blowing with Aled Jones. Remember that? <laughs> so, is everything looking good for your show this afternoon, Alan? Uh, yeah, I can just do with a few more bums on seats. I'll make sure mine's there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that for you. <laughs> Although, I suppose he does. He does, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Do you, uh, do you like it? Yeah. Tainted love. <laughs> bam, bam, tainted love. How long have you lived here, Alan? Oh, 20 years. 20 years, well, really? Uh, what kind of house is it? I mean, is it, like, is it detached, Tudor? It's hard to say. <laughs> yes, it is. It's hard to say. It's a detached Tudor. E no. It's, uh... detached. But not Tudor. <laughs> it's detached, but not Tudor. What, what it's it, quite it? low. It's a low. It's a bungalow. It's a bungalow. <laughs> so glad it's a bungalow. It's a bungalow. <laughs> love it, love it. All the stairs nonsense. <laughs> ice cream down there just turned up. The, the swirly ice cream. I don't know if you know. It was invented by Margaret Thatcher when she studied chemistry at Oxford. Just uh, just one of the uh, wonderful things she did before she was betrayed. <laughs> I had to judge the vegetable competition. Wish I was judging you, Susan. I'm not a vegetable, Alan. No, 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 no. If, if you were, you'd be, uh, you'd be a lovely Swede. Yeah. <laughs> I'd chop you up and put you in a casserole. A lovely succulent Susan Swede casserole. <laughs> Marinated in your own bath water. <laughs> Where do they get these men from? They're like idiots. I mean, who goes round leaning on another man's shoulder, pointing in his underpants? <laughs> Always saying, oh, look, over there, there's another man leaning on another man's shoulder. <laughs> Tony Hayes, deceased. Ooh, the chances of me having a second series have increased dramatically. Yeah, nice coffee. Is it from a sustainable forest? You ought to preserve the surface with cuprinol or some other polyurethane-based lacquer, or it'll go dull. Thank you for the travel clock. Oh, you got it? Well, little ones are very quick, aren't they? They are. <laughs> oh, and thank you for the hamper. Well, Chris, at least I could do. At least I could do. Oh, well, you know what they say, you know, in times of great sadness, it's always nice to... Have a bit of soft cheese. <laughs> yeah. We had our differences, and at the end of the day, you died. <laughs> <laughs> see, see the point, though, don't you? See the irony. <laughs> oh. Wasps. Shouldn't really uh, be here today. This field should have been fumigated. <laughs> uh, 
Um, sorry about that little uh, techno problem, but uh, techno notice, <laughs> as I say, <laughs> go to hell to soft sell. And instead, let us listen to Dark Phase, an as yet unsigned Norwich based band who keep sending me their CDs and describe themselves as a Roxy music for the 90s. This is their title track, and it's called Sophisticated Saxophone Woman. <laughs> Just get me a, a, a drum of dental floss, will you? My, uh, I'm having a plaque attack. My breath smells like a big cabbage. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Unbelievable. Look, he's reversing up a, a slip road. Is it that important that he sells that many shirts? 